I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bar Shem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and safety to the hopefully elect. All the sincere Akim scattered across the four corners of the earth. And for those who don't know, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father who the world ignorantly called God. And Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is another edition of Private Interpretation. So this is 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. And it reads, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And the prophecy I'm going to go into is dealing with the book of Revelation chapter 16 and verse 16, Armageddon. And the private interpretation is that it's dealing with an, an event. But I'm going to show you through this lesson that Armageddon is a place north of Manasseh. For those who don't know, Manasseh is one of the tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel. Showing you that this Armageddon is a place, as the scripture states, in Israel. And the private interpretation is that this is dealing with World War III. This is dealing with America. Okay? When... The scriptures don't support that. So uh, the first scripture I want to get before I jump into the lesson is Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 1. And it reads, run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And when it says through the streets of Jerusalem, it's referring to a people and not a place. Remember those dark sayings. The Bible is written in parables, uh, which are riddles and through the precepts. It's how you solve the riddle. So it reads, and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that execute judgment, that seeketh the truth. And that's the point right there. You know, you have a lot of guys within the circumcision that's not seeking the truth. And it goes on to read, and I will pardon it. All right. And this is part of that uh, new covenant. Uh, that Yahweh Shai, who the world equally calls Jesus Christ, came back to bring to his elect, all right, to pardon them for their sins. So when what what these uh, alphabet camps and even uh, through Esau philosophy, because basically that's where they get it from, that uh, America is uh is is heading to a third world's war, and the scriptures. Where it speaks of the uh, first, second, and third war is dealing with World War One, Two, and Three, and that's a private interpretation. So basically, I read this to show, in order to be pardoned, all right, through Yahweh Shai, all right, meaning uh, save from your sins, as the uh, scripture reads in Matthew chapter one, verse twenty-one, and she shall bring forth a son. And he shall save his people from their sins. All right. And that's going into that new covenant. Because of, according to the alphabet gangs, the one West doctrine, the new covenant is not going to kick in until we in the kingdom. But it's a flaw in that doctrine because we're not going to sin in the kingdom. The Lord is going to change our vile bodies. All right. So there's no need for us to be pardoned or saved from sin in the kingdom. And that's just more proof that we are currently in the new covenant. So uh, let's go to the next scripture. In the book of John. John chapter 5 and verse 39. And it reads, search the scriptures. Okay, search the scriptures. Just like the prophet Jeremiah 5 and 1 reads. Okay, those that seeketh the truth. All right, and these guys are not seeking the truth, man. Okay, and the truth is located in the Bible, in the scriptures. So it reads, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. All right, not in these private interpretations. All right, not in the so-called white man uh, uh, philosophy that these guys tend to uh, use. It says, and they are they which testify of me. All right, and that's symbolizes the truth man okay so now let's get another one and uh 
the book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 11. And it reads, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures, meaning to seek the truth. All right. Remember, those are the noble ones that's going to receive that pardon, man, that's going to be saved from their sin. All right. So it says whether those things were so. So this is what you're supposed to do. You don't supposed to take a man's word for it. All right. You're supposed to search the scriptures and them ye find eternal life. All right. Through this truth. So the scriptures is how you get pardoned for your sins. Okay? So now, let's get into it. This is the book of Revelations. Chapter 16 and verse 16. And it reads, And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now the he is referring to the Lord, of course. Okay? And the them is referring to the heathens. Okay? And this place is referring to Megiddo. Alright? In the land of Israel. Alright? It's not referring to an event. It's not referring to uh, World War Three. Alright? So now, let's get another precept and prove that point. Before we do that, let's look up this word, Armageddon. <clears throat> and you see here it says... The hill or city of Megiddo. Alright. Just like the scripture state. A place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Okay. It says the scene of the struggle of good and evil. Suggested of the battle plane. Um, it say great victories. Of Barak over the Canaanites. And of Gideon over the Midianites. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, Armageddon, a symbol name, Armageddon. Now, let's get another precept to prove that point and go to the book of Judges uh, 5 and 19. And it reads, the king came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan and Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. Now we know the land of Canaan is today called Israel. Okay? So now let's look up this word Megiddo here in the Old Testament. It says place of crowds. And remember in Revelation 16, 16 it says he gathered them. Alright? Meaning all the heathen nations. Alright? We're going to show you that in this lesson. So it says Megiddo or Megidion. A place of crowds. Ancient city of Canaan. Assigned to Manasseh. Okay. So it's a place. And not an event. Alright. And that's the private interpretation. Of Armageddon. Alright. It's being taught. That this is referring to World War 3. Okay. Like I said. The first, second and third world. Is not referring to the first, second and third world's war. Alright, remember you have to search the scriptures And them through the precepts That's how you find eternal life Alright, that's what testifies of the truth And that's how you uh, Be pardoned, man Okay So, uh, as you can see here on the screen It says uh, Revenous Revenous Okay, and I want you to remember that word A place in Palestine Megiddo, Megidion Alright, that same place that's referred to in Revelation 16, 16, man. Okay, so now that we proved that, let's get another precept here in Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38, we're going to start at verse 1. And I'm going to show you what it means when he refers to the them. Okay, so it says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, the chief prince of Machief and Tebal, 
and prophesy against him. And not with private interpretations. With thus saith the Lord, man. Okay? Remember, search the scriptures. Verse 3. And say, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of my chief Antibal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaw, and I will bring thee forth, and all thy armies, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, all of them with shields and Helmets, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tegamal of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. And that's the them that's referred to that's going to be gathered in Revelation 16, 16. Okay. So now let's prove it a little further. This is Revelation 19 and verse 10. And it reads, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the power for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And this is not up for any private interpretations. Okay. Remember, you have to search the scriptures. That's what testifies of the Lord. All right, not private interpretation from your elders, man. Verse 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness doeth he judge and make war. Referring to Yahweh Shai. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. Okay, and the reason he had many crowns on his head because all those uh, uh, nations that I read in Ezekiel 38, he's going to destroy. All right. So it says in righteousness, he do a judge and make war. Okay. Uh, jumping down to verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the word of the power. Yahweh Shai. Verse 14, which is the point. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon the white horse clothed in linen and in white and clean. Okay? So that's those armies that I read about in Ezekiel chapter 38 there. Okay? So we're going to read down even further. And it says, out of his mouth goeth his sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. All those nations that I read about in Ezekiel 38. Alright? And he shall woo them with the rod of iron, and he shall tread at the rind press of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty power. And he have no, and he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great power, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, small and great." Okay, so now let me give you another precept in the book of Ezekiel. Go back to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39 and uh, verse 11 to show you, give you further proof, all right, give you further evidence, all right. Remember, no prophecy of the scripture is up for any private interpretation. Precept must be upon precept. Okay? So remember what we just read in Revelation 19. Okay? About that great supper. Alright? That's going to happen when the Lord gather all these armies in the place in the Armageddon tongue. Armageddon. Alright? And this is going to 
make it more clear for you. So this is Ezekiel 39 and 11, and it reads, And it shall come to pass that in that day, in the day that we just read about, that I will give unto God a place there of graves in Israel. All right, remember, Armageddon is a place, all right, known as Megiddo. All right, so it says, and it shall come to pass that in that day that I will give thee, I will give unto God a place. All right, that same place in Revelation 16, man. Okay, there of graves in Israel, in Armageddon, Megiddo. The valley of passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall, and there shall they bury God and all his multitude, all those armies that we read about, and they shall call it the valley of Hamagog. Now, I want to jump down to verse 17. And the Son of Man, and thou Son of Man, thou Saith the Lord power speak unto every feathered fowl just like we read in the book of revelations man okay so it says speak to every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field assemble yourselves and come gather yourselves on every side to the sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you even a great sacrifice upon the mountain of Israel that ye may eat the flesh and drink blood Ye shall eat the flesh of mighty of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of rams, of lambs and goats and bullocks and of all the fatling of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drink, drunken of the sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, thus saith the Lord, power. Okay? So now, let's go back to Revelation chapter 16, and verse 16, and read this without any private interpretations. And he gathered them, alright? And you know that them is referring to all these armies, alright? Of the other nations, alright? Together, into a place and we know that place is north of Manasseh which is called Megiddo called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon All right, this is not referring to World War 3 this is not referring to America All right, that's a private interpretation and with that I hope you brothers were edified and Shalom